Hello everyone, this is Katya from Calanindesigns.blogspot.com. Today I have a very fun, cute Halloween card to share with you. I'm using several different products from several different companies. The stamp I'm using is from Michael's, the dollar bin store. I thought it was a cute pumpkin. And I'm using the Celebrate Every Day stamp set from Hero Arts. And I'll be stamping this cute Happy Halloween greeting on the front of the card. I'm also going to be using two different distress inks from Tim Holtz. One is Black Soot, the other one is Dusty Concord. Now off camera, I actually cut the focal panel of my card in white, which I will be doing some distress inking with. And I also used the rolling hills that I cut off camera as well in black because I want to use that as part of the focal panel on the front. And using these sticky notes from 3M, I created a mask for myself because I don't have any masking paper and I'm gonna use that for the moon because I wanna distress ink around the moon. So I'm placing the green sticky note mask that's gonna be my moon and I'm placing that off center to the left hand because I'm that's where I really want the moon to kind of be shining. And I'm placing the black cardstock rolling hills on the forefront to kind of get a placement feel for where I want the moon to be and it, that's exactly where I want it. So here I am taking, I'm starting off with the Dusty Concord ink and starting from the center of that mask, I'm working my way around the moon and I'm not being too careful about making sure that I get a clean blending with that purple because it will just lend itself to the sort of eerie background feel that I'm going for for Halloween. So I'm continuing to add the Dusty Concord Distress Ink all the way around the card and again, I'm not worrying too much about the bottom of the card because that's where the black panels are going to be covering all of that up. So I didn't need to work on that piece right there. So I'm now starting off with the black soot in Distress Ink from Ranger and making it a little bit darker on the edges to give it a little bit more of a spooky feel. Now that I've added the black, I think it sort of intensifies it and sort of makes it look like it's glowing from the purple all the way to the edge of the card. So I set that panel aside to dry. And I'm coming in and I will be stamping the little pumpkin off to the left that you see using some Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm gonna be using some alcohol markers and the set I have are the Spectrum Noirs. So I'll be using those to color this pumpkin in. Now because I'm going to be fussy cutting around and leaving a little white border, I wanted to make sure I stamped this pumpkin twice just in case I made a mistake on the first one. Now I always use my trusty chart for my Spectrum NARS because I always want to make sure that I use the right color combos when coloring. The caps on the Spectrum NARS aren't necessarily exactly the color that you see when you put down on paper. So you can see on this one I'm using a, uh, a lighter color that actually looks like yellow on the end of the cap, but when you see I put it down, it's actually a little bit of a darker orange. So I sped up this portion of the video so it wouldn't be so painful to watch me lay down color and shade certain parts of it. So I'm going in with a little bit of a darker orange on the ridges of the pumpkin to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic. Now because this pumpkin is not enormous, it only really took me two separate colors to get the shading down that I wanted. I almost wished I would have gone back in with a darker shade of orange along the ridges to kind of make the ridges stand out a little bit more and give the pumpkin a little bit more definition. But for the most part, I was happy with how this turned out. So now I'm gonna be moving on to the stem of the pumpkin. And again, I only needed to use two colors because the image is so small and that piece is pretty small itself and it didn't really take very much to get the shading that I was going after. So now that the pumpkin is finished being uh, colored, I decided to fussy cut it out with some scissors. So here I am planning out where I want my pumpkin to go and I again put the black hills down there and peeling off the mask to reveal that cool crisp moon that I used with some sticky note paper. And I cut the circle out from regular paper here because what I want to do is give that moon a little bit of shimmer, but I didn't want it to get onto the rest of the sky area. So using Shimmer Mist in Clear by Tsukaneko, I sprayed a little bit on to some scratch paper to make sure that I was getting a nice clean spray. I wound up spraying the moon and a little bit kind of spread off and got onto the pumpkin there. You'll see it kind of looks like 
wink of Stella already anyway. And a little bit of it was heavy handed, but I was okay with that because the moon has a little bit of stuff on it anyway to kind of make it look like it's not a perfectly white moon. So the first black rolling hill, I decided to use some glue. And honestly, I wish I would have just used some tape runner. And I actually wind up doing that on the next piece here because you'll see get a little glue seep out of the edge there. So there's the glue that's going to be showing right there where I kind of wipe it off. And then I actually use my tape gun to put the other panel down. And you can see I'm leaving just a little bit of an edge at the top of that hill so that I can kind of tuck the pumpkin in towards the end here. So last piece of tape down there and once in the middle for good measure. And then I place that down on top of the other panel, which is going to hide that dried glue anyway. So using my EK Success Powder Tool, I am prepping the surface of the black cardstock hill for my scent, my Happy Halloween sentiment because I don't want to get any embossing powder on the card elsewhere other than the stamped sentiment itself. And I'm going to be showing you a product that I use that I discovered from another blogger called the Absorber. And the Absorber is a really neat product that allows you to wipe away that excess powder and also I use it to clean my stamps. It's fantastic. It doesn't leave any lint or residue and it can be thrown in the wash. So you'll see me wipe off that powder residue after I stamp with the Versamark ink and apply the white embossing powder. So off camera, I warmed up my heat tool and then took it to the paper. And it's always a good idea to do that so that you don't get a lot of heavy warping, especially with those panels on there. And here's the absorber. Now watch this. When I take this, which is super slightly damp, and I wipe off the excess powder residue, look at how crisp that happy Halloween sentiment becomes. It's awesome. And you can find that absorber rag as well on Amazon. So here I am placing the pumpkin where I think I want it to go. And I'm happy with that. And then off camera, instead of placing that panel directly on the card base, which is also black, I felt like it needed a little bit more pop around the edge. So I cut that other white stitched panel that you see here off to the right. So here I am placing the pumpkin back down and adhering that to my card front panel. And because I'm not the neatest crafter, I didn't clean my craft mat to make sure that there was no more of that glitter spray left all over. And I wound up ruining the moon a little bit, but as with crafters, we all know that something can be salvaged, right? So I went in with a very, very light hand and I decided to strategically put a little bit of the Distress ink in purple and added a little bit more color to the moon to offset that glitter that uh, got a little bit heavy in that one area. So you'll see me affix the front panel to the black cardstock base. So you'll see towards the end that the moon actually has a little bit more of the purple incorporated into it to add a little bit more dimension and to sort of hide the mistakes that I made with the glitter being heavy handed. So you'll see there with the purple in the middle of the moon, I added that. And this is the look of the final card project, but I also added some black sequins to the front in an odd number. And in the center of those, I put some liquid beading. So I hope you've enjoyed this card tutorial. If you do like this video, please don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment in the section and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me and have a great crafty day. Ciao for now.